As a young boy growing up in my hometown of Witness in Northern England, I had my own favorite tree. Well, it wasn't really mine, but I adopted it. Well, more accurately, I suppose it adopted me. The tree was on the edge of a field in Victoria Park, not far from my home at 49 Birchfield Road. My four brothers also had their own preferred trees, all conveniently located close to the playground. We would often sit high amongst the branches, shouting across to each other, safe from the prowling wild animals on the ground, the evil spaceships attacking us from the sky, or the pirate ships waiting to drag us off to a life of endless slavery. The trees were our safe zones where we were hidden from the world. Occasionally I would visit my tree alone and spend hours among the leaves in flights of fanciful imagination. The tree would then be the center of my universe as well as my best friend. Quite recently, while visiting my sister in Witness, I was delighted to once again renew my acquaintance with these trees. They seemed a bit smaller than in my memory, but otherwise quite unchanged. Today, as a grown-up boy, I have many more tree friends scattered across the world, which I like to visit whenever possible. I don't climb as much as I used to, but I still like to use my imagination. I've been labeled a landscape photographer, and I'm often asked why I don't make portraits. Well, of course I do, but of trees. When asked why, I usually answer half-jokingly that trees don't need to primp themselves. They never answer back, and I always seem happy with the portraits that I make. They're also fiercely independent, graphically beautiful, and seem quite happy to wait around in the cold for many hours while I make long time exposures. How could anybody not love photographing a tree? I once had a dream that I was a giant chestnut tree. It seemed that as I grew, centuries came and went. I looked down from where I stood and observed generations of people, individuals and families going about their lives. Our ongoing human stories, often viewed through the subjective prisms of drama, comedy or tragedy, seem to take on a whole different light when viewed from this new perspective. I think that I woke up a changed person, and my respect for these sentinels of experience was dramatically increased. Towers of dignity, trees silently offer their wisdom to those willing to listen. One of nature's finest gifts, trees have been and continue to be, the subject for poets and painters, photographers and philosophers. The tree has been described as the universal archetype that unites the underworld, earth and sky. Joyce Kilmer, 1886 to 1918, once wrote that only God can make a tree. We've all heard references to the tree of life, the family tree, the tree of knowledge and so forth. From the giant elders of the land standing majestic and proud, invoking respect and humbleness, to the freshly growing saplings, delicate and fragile, hungry for the sky, and from the lone tree visible for miles around, a beacon of graceful calm, to the never-ending forest covering immense mountain sides, the tree is deservedly and necessarily ubiquitous in our world and culture, and long may it remain so. For some 45 years I've had the distinct honour and privilege to photograph trees in a variety of different countries. I'm very grateful to be able to offer their portraits as a small token of immense appreciation for their presence in our world. We are all indebted to the trees. They give us so much and ask for so little in return.